Well, good morning, everybody. It has been so long since I have actually filmed a video. I think the last video I actually filmed for you all, you probably have seen it already. It was my uh, like cook like the Amish for a day. And I made a whole meal from an Amish cookbook. Whoops, now I'm competing with the irrigation engine. But I think yesterday it got over 90. It was really, really humid. Today again, it's supposed to be near 90. And there's the air conditioner going. <laughs> a lot of sounds out here today. And um, anyway, it's early. Warren got up really early to irrigate on. I'm looking down there. Looks like he's irrigating on just the new beds. And probably, probably like last year's plantings as well, I would guess. I don't know that. I can't see those beds from where I'm at. But anyway, he's irrigating the, the cranberry vines. And I think he's only irrigating for about an hour or something like that this morning. So that it kind of just like wets the ground. And it can do like what they call evaporative cooling as the day gets hotter. And oh my goodness, the deer flies are already attacking me right now. So we still have the honeybees in. I'm gonna put my coffee and my bowl down. Okay, so I'll just turn the camera around here for a minute. You can see we still have the bees in. The bees are going to be going home sometime tonight, tomorrow night, or the next night. So one of the next three nights, there's one of the new beds down there. That's bed number six, if I'm not mistaken. And he's got the irrigation going there. But the reason that I came out here early here is because I wanted to pick the blueberries. So my blueberries get very, very overgrown with um, with these rose bushes. So we have these old time rose bushes that just take off. So I have cut these over in this area back. Let me see if I can zoom out a little bit. That's as far as I can go. I've cut these rose bushes out over and over and over and look at I mean they're as tall as I am <laughs> right there I just keep cutting them every single year and they just keep growing and my blueberries are in here as well and you can tell that or maybe you can see that there's a few blueberries to be picked I never did get them covered and so I'm going to try to be very very proactive this year and get some of these blueberries picked so I've got my coffee my mom made me this cup so it's all these different ways of saying coffee in different languages. I don't know, I feel like it's not focusing very well, unless it's just my morning eyes. You guys, I turned 50, <laughs> and now I feel like in the morning, in the early, early morning, and late at night, my eyes, they're just like blurry. I, it's hard for me to, I've never ever had to wear glasses before, and I find myself wearing reading glasses every now and again, especially, like I said, morning or late night, if I'm trying to do anything where I have to see up close. And I brought out my new bowl. I got this set of bowls from Dollar General. I stopped in there on Saturday to pick up something for Sam, and they had all of their summer stuff that had a green dot on it. They had buy one, get one free. So I bought this set of bowls. This is the smallest one and it's a set of three bowls. They have lids. They are so cute. Anyway, I better get picking because I am getting, I'm gonna get carried off by these stupid deer flies. Oh boy, yeah, I see, I do have some in here. Not a ton, but I, I just wanted to get everything that I could before the silly chipmunks get in here and get all of them or birds or whatever it is that's getting them all. Mm, blueberry pancakes for breakfast. Not sure if I showed you what I picked. It's hard to tell in the bowl how much it is, but I would say I picked probably two cups of blueberries. We've already eaten some and put some in pancakes, so it was a good harvest. It's probably my best harvest ever of blueberries. I actually caught them before the critters got them. So we've had a pretty um, full day so far. 
I'm trying to think, I think I was just making breakfast the last time I checked in with you guys and it's already 2.35. Warren actually had an errand to run in a town that's like an hour and 15 minutes away. He actually took the three youngest kids, Sam's off at work. So I'm home alone here today. I was supposed to help Amber um, with, she has a final for a class that she's taking this summer and she had to like do an interview coaching session something like that for 30 minutes and then she had to uh, type it all up anyway she was going to do the interview and the coaching session with me but then that got canceled because something else had come up i'm home alone here and i thought it is time to bake some bread we are completely out of store-bought bread in the freezers and this morning joe really wanted toast i made blueberry pancakes and he does not like pancakes, so he was looking around for toast. I'm like, I can do bagels, I can do English muffins, I just can't give you toast, buddy. And he was pretty bummed. So I thought I would bake some more bread, and I really, really wanted to give you guys this recipe. The, I made this bread before. This is the soft sandwich bread. You know, and unfortunately, this recipe did not make the cut for the cookbook, but here it is. It's so easy. Uh, just delete the food coloring. You can turn this into rainbow bread, which is what Amber used to always do. Um, I wonder if I, I wonder if I can find a photo of that someplace and show you all. But anyway, um, it's just two cups of warm water, two thirds cup sugar, one and a half teaspoon salt, one fourth cup of vegetable oil, six cups. I always use bread flour and one and a half tablespoons of yeast. It's a little much for my bread machine, but it, it'll work. I put it all into my bread machine turn it onto the dough cycle and when it's all finished I will turn it out, shape it, and put it into bread pans and bake it in the oven. Okay, you can hear the bread machine going. So now it's time to sit down. This is the very final copy of, well, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> this is the nearly final copy of my next cookbook. I have a canner. <laughs> that makes a noise <laughs> of my next cookbook, which I was hoping was going to be out August 1st. Considering that it is the 19th of July. I think it's gonna take a little bit longer. They usually say about 20 to 25 business days for the printing and the shipping for it to arrive to my house. And I'm going to submit it later this afternoon, or not submit, it's already been submitted, but I'm going to go through it one last time with a fine tooth comb right now. I have an hour and 40 minutes before the, or an hour and 30 minutes, I think, before my bread machine beeps. And so I'm just gonna sit down put on my reading glasses and I, and I have a red pen someplace here. I just had one and I'm just gonna go through this word for word for word, just looking at everything, making sure that there aren't any typos. I already did it once, so it gives me an option to proof, actually not an option, it requires me to proof every single recipe before it gets submitted to them fully. And then they give me like a finalized copy of what the cookbook's going to look like. And then they actually have me proof it one more time. And then I have to sign off saying that there's no mistakes. You guys probably remember there were a couple mistakes in the first volume. Uh, I did get those corrected for like the second printing. So hopefully you got one without any mistakes. But if you do happen to find a mistake, please email me. I am very, very happy uh, when I hear from people letting me know. Uh, I think you this word was supposed to be paid instead of pad. <laughs> that was one of the mistakes. You'll have to see if you can find it. It'll be like a Where's Waldo in your, in your cookbook. Anyway, what I'm trying to say here is that I'm gonna sit down I'm going to work on this. I'm going to get the final, final copy approved so that they can start the printing because pretty soon I'm going to be ready to take pre-orders to make sure that um, your copy is here and ready, ready for shipping as soon as they get to me. Uh, I can print all the labels beforehand and then as soon as they come, I'll just have one big day of packaging up and getting those shipped out so that you can get it as soon as possible. All right, I better go do this. Okay, well, I hope that 
I don't get dinged here. It's been a long time since Joe has uh, turned our house into a dance club, but he's got the music cranking in the background and I wanted to show you the bread. Everything was happening at once. The phone was ringing three times, three different people in a row. Um, the the kids and Warren, they were getting home. Everything was happening. So I didn't get any video of me rolling out the dough, but I don't do anything special. I put some oil down on the counter and then I just kind of kneaded it a couple times, divided it in half, and then I put half into each of these pans. I sprayed the pans and now I just have it covered and I'm just gonna let this rise. This makes a really delicious sandwich bread, really soft and it stays soft for, for five, six days if it hangs around that long. So anyway, I'm just gonna let that rise. It is gonna take a while to rise, probably 30 minutes, maybe even a little longer. And I like to let it rise until it's about an inch over the side of the pan here. So I'm gonna get my oven set to 350 because look at the bread, that one rose way, way up. And this one is just exactly what I was kind of looking for, for it to be about an inch over. And I don't want that one to raise up or rise up too far and then fall over. So anyway, oven is set to 350. We have some supper ready here for us. It, we're eating a little late, 7.15 tonight. We have some green beans. And then under here are some boneless pork chops. Let's see if I can show you guys. Well, I'll just wait and show you when we plate it up. 